Hello, I'm Sean Paul, and I'm a missionary down in Honduras, and today we're going to talk about how to build successful bell siphons. A lot of people complain about their siphon not working, um, why is it continuously draining my bed, so forth and so forth. We get a lot of complaints about that. So we're going to talk about that. Before we do that, I want to share a little bit with you about who we are. Uh, we have a website called www.morningstaraquaponics.com. If you're like me, starting out in aquaponics, or you've built a system, you're not satisfied, you're frustrated with it, well, what we've done is we've created a 43-page book, step-by-step, -step, with over 100 uh, photos in that actual book, and then we did a complimentary 45-minute tutorial video along with that book. Within that book, we've got diagrams, we've got schematics, and then we have a shopping list, and actually we have a... Um, a tool this as well. So you can actually take the system from eight grow beds down to four grow beds, whatever your choice is, and we provide the schematics for both, four and eight. So just go to that website, and uh, if it's something that you like, uh, you can download it. It's an ebook, and then within the ebook, we give you a video link and a password to access the actual video. So back to this. Um, this right here uh, is, is the components that go into a bell siphon, okay? Now, uh, before we start, let me explain something. There's two types of aquaponic systems with grow media in it, as far as like, uh, like uh, gravel, uh, clay pebbles, stuff like that. So there's, that's the type of system we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the constant flood, where the, the system is constantly flooded and there's no draining effect other than whatever spills over into the standpipe. That's a constant flood system. And then you have a flood and drain system where it floods to the top of the standpipe and then literally all the water is sucked out of the system, out of the grow bed back into the sump pit. That's what we're going to talk about today. That's what a bell siphon is for. So uh, right here is kind of a cutaway picture. This is your grow bed. This is your, this is your grow media. And then this is probably roughly one inch. You want, you want one inch of grow media above uh, above the top of the standpipe within the bell siphon, okay? So you want this constantly dry. You do not want uh, moisture in this area right here. You want that constantly dry. And then obviously, this is where we've got our plants. Now that's a pretty little plant that I'm putting right there. Okay, so, so this is a standpipe within the actual bell siphon, okay? Now, what you want to do is you want this to be around 11 inches. Okay, so that's how tall you want that standpipe to be. And then this is the bottom of the grow bed. So obviously this is a bulkhead connector. There are several different ways that you could do this, but what I do is I order bulkhead connectors, and uh, I've never had any issues by putting bulkhead connectors in there. And then obviously this is the pipe that goes down here, and then the pipe that goes over to the, the, to the main drain pipe right there. Now, what we're trying to do is create a siphon. Okay, so I want to kind of explain a few things to you before we go into this. What you want to do is this right here uh, can be different sizes. That's your choice. Okay, now like in, uh, but the, the rule of thumb is this, is if you do a one inch standpipe, you need to do a two inch bell siphon housing. So whatever this is, you need to double it and, and do that right that there. So let's just... Let's just say that this is one and a half inch, one and a half inch standpipe, okay? So this needs to be a, a three inch uh, PVC pipe right there, okay? So I'm just telling you, this needs to be double. So whatever this is, that needs to be that, okay? Now, the next thing is, is a bell siphon. If you have your system designed properly, and your pump is pumping enough water into the grow beds, this should flood and drain every 45 minutes. That's the minimum. You want it to flood, you want it to flood with water, okay? And you want it to drain all the water out of the system within 45 minutes. That's what your goal is. Okay, so as you can see, like I said, this is a one and a half inch pipe. This is a bulkhead connector. You're continuing on with the one and a half inch. This is a, obviously a 90 degree elbow, and then you are taking it over to the main supply line. Now, some would say, well, Sean, why aren't you just dumping it directly into the su uh, supply line? Why, why don't you have the supply line here? Why do you have it over there? Well, 
What it is, is we're creating a siphon. And if you think about siphons, what happens is it's actually drawing the water out, and the water is kind of, so to speak, giving weight and suction, so to speak. And so if you're dumping directly into a large pipe, it loses all its suction, and then you're going to have issues with creating that siphon. So in my grow bed, what I did is I ensured that this was at least, at least 12 inches long before I actually dumped it into the main supply line or the drain line uh, going out from underneath the grow beds into the sump pit. Because this goes to the sump pit, okay? That goes to the sump pit. So, so basically, you want at least 12 inches on this, this, uh, this, this pipe right here and you want it to slope into the main supply line. So as that does that, what happens is that will have a, a great siphon effect. And it will do its job as long as you have it set up exactly like that. Okay, now let's go on to and talk about the bell siphon itself. This bell siphon, like I said, is three inches. So if this is one and a half inches, this is three inches. If this is, uh, if this is two inches, this needs to be four inches. So you just double whatever your standpipe is, you double the size right there. Now, this right here, the main thing that I want you to see, and very, very important, is the bottom of this siphon rests on the bottom or on the top of that bulkhead. It just depends on the size of the bulkhead that you get. It will rest on the top of that right there. This right here, the, the very bottom of that cap, needs to be the very same height of the top of that standpipe. That's exactly where that cap needs to be. So you need to measure this so exactly the top of that cap, as it rests down, it comes to the exact same height as that standpipe. So that's a very important factor because within this area, you're creating a, a siphon effect within this area, and this pressurizes in that area. So you need to have that height above that top of that standpipe. Now, at the bottom, at the bottom of this, uh, this, this siphon right here, I cut in grooves, so to speak, in the bottom. This whole entire area is a solid piece, and this is going to rest at the bottom of the grow bed or on top of the, 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 the bulkhead connector. So you need to cut a groove on one side and then turn it over and cut another groove on the other side. So all your water... All your water will be in this area right here, but, but uh, so, so this area right here, okay? But, uh, but so as it fills up, the water will be coming through there, that hole right there, as it fills up, as this bell, bell siphon housing fills up, okay? Now, then over here, so this is a three inch PVC pipe, this is a three inch cap that goes on the top, and then what you have is you have an L L uh, shape fitting, okay? Now you need to uh, 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 drill a hole on the side of that, put that in there, you need to silicone it really good because this needs to be glued and that needs to be silicone. This has to be uh, uh, tight as far as there can be no leaks, uh, nothing. Uh, air cannot get in there, it has to be completely sealed tight. And then this is a plastic hose, this is a plastic hose right here, and then what I do is I put a spacer between the hose and the actual uh, bell siphon, and I zip tie that to that. So basically, your pipe is nice and straight all the way down. It doesn't curve, it doesn't twist, turn, nothing. It's just a nice straight drop. And then what you want is you want the bottom of this hose to come down, to come down, and it comes off the bottom of the grow bed, probably like a half an inch, quarter of an inch. Now. I'm going to talk about this here in a minute, uh, this little cap, because that's very, very important. Uh, that cap is very critical to your bell cycle. So, like I said, you've got to make sure this whole entire thing is glued, silicone, and that, that, uh, that uh, connection right there needs to be tight, okay, as far as uh, you might even want to put a C-clamp on it, or not a C-clamp, but a, a, a hose clamp on that to ensure that everything is actually tight, okay? Now, what happens is, is this goes on and over this right here. And then this little cap, this is very important. I watched the video because uh, I was concerned about my siphons working properly. This little cap is like a three-quarter inch cap. And all it does is it rests 
on the bottom of the grow bed. And then as the water, uh, uh, what happens is this water will fill up, will fill up, and then what it does is it comes to the top of the sandpipe within the system. So that's the sandpipe. So the water comes, fills up. As the grow bed is filling up, what happens is this fills up as well. So as it fills up, what's happening is the water spills over into the standpipe. So then as that's flowing down, it's creating a siphon or a suction, so to speak, and then all the water in the grow bed is getting sucked through this hose and down the pipe. Okay? So that's what you want. And then what happens is, is the weight of this little cap is it's resting on the bottom of the system, so to speak, on the bottom of the grow bed. It's resting there, okay? And then what happens is as the water comes down and as it sucks it completely out and the water comes to the point of at the top of that cap, that cap floats up and it literally shuts off this siphon. So it sh totally shuts off the siphon, it gets sucked up, stops the siphon, and then the cap falls back down to the bottom of the grow bed, and then what happens is it starts all back over again. So then the next thing is, is you uh, uh, take this right here, this is, so, so this right here is, is three inch, so then I would double that as well. Now you can make it smaller if you wish, that's your choice, but then what I do is I do a six inch PVC pipe, right here, this would be six inch, and then what I do is I cut grooves. I take a chop saw and I cut grooves all the way around down on the bottom lower portion of the sandpipe. I don't go all the way up to the top because what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to draw water from the bottom area of the grow bed and I'm not wanting to necessarily draw water from up here. I'm wanting to draw from this area right here. This is the area that I'm wanting to draw water. So all your water from your grow bed will be flowing into this, this uh, pipe right here, will be going into the bell siphon right here, and then it'll be going down the standpipe. So like I said, this could be six inches right here. You put a cap on top of that. You do not want any sunlight to come down inside there. Because what will happen is uh, uh, you'll start growing algae. So you want to have a cap on that, and then you can periodically pull it off. So don't glue it. Don't glue it. So you can purely pull it off, you can pull out your bell siphon, you can periodically inspect it, you can look at this hose, make sure it's not getting clogged up and dirty, you may have to periodically check that. Um, if your bell siphon is not working, the first thing you want to do is check and make sure your silicone is still tight and sealed around here, that you have a nice tight seal on that cap and that, uh, uh, the, the, um, the fitting and, and the plastic hose. You want to make sure that you have a tight fit. Okay guys, I put everything together here. I apologize for my drawing, but I'm going to walk you through this. And I know I'm probably going to be a little repetitive here, but I just wanted you to see everything together. And uh, so this right here is the top of your grow bed. So yes, you're the top of the, uh, the shroud, so to speak, or the, the tube that you put down over this whole entire thing will be sticking up out of the grow media. This is your inspection cap right here, so you can take that off and inspect it. And then, then the water level is right at the top of the uh, standpipe. So that is the water level. That's what it will come up to as it constantly uh, fills up and then drains, fills up and drains, okay? So there, there's that right there. And then so, so literally what's, what's happened is you have, uh, you have a, a inlet, so to speak, into your grow bed, okay? So this is your supply line, okay? So that's your supply of water. It dumps into the uh, dumps into the grow bed, okay. And then what happens is your grow bed fills up, okay. And then as as that fills up, what will be happening is you have the slot cut in at the bottom of this bell siphon. There's there's a slot on each side. What will happen is the water will be feeling inside this bell siphon housing. It will be going up with the water level as well, okay? So your, your, your water level is going up, 
And then what happens is inside the bell siphon, as soon as it, it gets to the top of the standpipe, it starts spilling over into your drain. Okay? Now, what happens then is because it's pressurized in here, then as that's pulling that water down, it's creating a suction. So then what happens is the water starts getting sucked into this hose and going down into the drain as well. So then uh, all the water is going into your drain, out to your main drain line right here. This is, this is 12 inches long or longer and you want it to connect into your main supply line because this is 12 inches and because this is slow property properly this is create a actual siphon and it will what it will do is it will suck all the water out of your grow bed so now your water is going down and then once it gets to the bottom of this little hose this cap that I told you to put on there, that three-quarter inch cap, it will become buoyant and it will float up to the water level. It will tap the bottom of this, it will tap the bottom of that hose, it will shut the siphon off, and then what happens is your grow, uh, your grow bed will begin to fill back up with water again. And you should have a constant uh, flood and drain every 45 minutes in your system. That is the standard right there. You want it to flood and drain, flood and drain every 45 minutes. And the way I've designed this, I've designed this, I've used this for my own system and I've had never any issues at all. I've, they have never stopped running, they've never stopped working. Well hopefully this is a, a, a great lesson for you. Maybe it's answered some questions. Remember our website www.morningstaraquaponics.com you can download an ebook there, 43 pages of schematics, photos, step-by-step -step process, shopping list, tool list, and then we have a complimentary video that goes along with that, 45 minutes long. So trust me, you could start building your system today, or if you're not happy with your system and you want to have a professional design, go to our website, and trust me, you will find that it's extremely professional, that uh, system that we're uh, building today. So God bless you. Have a great day.